Welcome everyone. Uh, God bless you. I, I hope you have had a glorious uh, morning, Sunday morning, uh, by attending church or uh, following the uh, Divine Liturgy on the internet. Welcome Father Joseph um, and Father Hans. Welcome. Um, as I said, I hope you've had a glorious uh, weekend and a glorious Sunday especially uh, and have had a happy Thanksgiving and uh, had a uh, uh, break from uh, the hard work that we all do during the week uh, on Thursday and Friday. Um, today's uh, epistle reading and gospel reading are very interesting. Um, the epistle reading is uh, from uh, the epistle of St. Paul to the Ephesians, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Um, let me read it. It's small, so we can read it. Brethren, I, a prisoner for the Lord. What does that mean? He's a prisoner for the Lord. Well, it's likely that he wrote this epistle when he was in Rome, imprisoned by the Roman authorities. Um, and that's why he says, I, a prisoner for the Lord, um, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all lowliness, meekness, with patience, for bearing one another, in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all, and in all but grace was given to each to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts so it sounds like very general but yet it is very specific he uses the word one many many times he uses the word one many many times what is he talking about well this is stating something that we should all know especially in this modern days there is a movement there has been a movement that there is no need for the church since god since jesus saves what do we need the church for we just pray to jesus and he will save us and that's all we need there is no need to go to church there is no need for the formal church at all. That's the arguments that some people make. Well, this is an answer to that. He says, maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The unity of the Spirit in the church. I'm going to read to you other quotes that confirm all of this I'm saying. Um, so he's saying we need to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Um, there is one body and one Spirit, just as you are called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. So, he is referring basically to the one church. One church in that he founded. And he is the head of this church. Um, let me read to you a, um, some verses that support this. For example, in Matthew... 16 18 he says i will build my church jesus says in matthew 16 18 i will build my church 
So why is he building it? So that we don't need it? He made the church his body. The church is his body. And who is this body? It's us. The humans who follow him. So because of that, the church is very much needed. It is his body who is us. We are members in his body. And he is the head of the church. This is a very important epistle reading that talks about the church. Let me read to you more. In the book of Acts, the people said, What shall we do? That's Acts 2.37. And Peter said to them, Be baptized and join with the other believers. And three thousands of them joined that day. Acts 2, 2, 38 and 41. So all of that indicates that the church is very, very important. And the movement that says, we don't need the church. I am spiritual, but not religious. It contradicts the teachings of the New Testament. Without the church, there is no spirituality. Okay, let me read to you some more. This is from the book of Acts as well. Acts 2.47 From this point on, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. This is Acts 2.47 So, it is very important to realize that without the church, there is no spirituality. In Acts 2, 42 through 47, it talks about continuing together in prayer and in the Eucharist. The Eucharist cannot be done without the church. Continuing together in prayer and in the Eucharist. So St. Paul here, is emphasizing the idea of the oneness in the church. As he said, maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So the church is the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the church. And we are, who are baptized and receive the Eucharist, members of the body of the church Mem members of the body of Christ who is the church these are very important points to keep in mind especially the book of Acts the book of Acts talks about these things specifically okay now let's talk a little bit more about the uh, gospel reading which is from Luke according to St. Luke uh, chapter 18 verses 18 to 27 but before I talk about that I missed telling you a point at the end of the epistle he says but the grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts us being members of the body of Christ have different gifts and they are given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gifts so every one of us has a different gift from Christ from God as we operate in his church as we operate as members of the body of Christ which is the church so we all complement each others in those gifts that have been on these graces that have been given to us to continue to build the church. So um, 
if you encounter someone who talks about spirituality without religion, spirituality without the church, you can quote acts as I just did. And especially Ephesians chapter 4 that talks about the church and its importance in our world. Okay. So now let's go back to the a gospel reading according to St. Luke, chapter 18, verses 18, dash, uh, dash 27 through 27. At that time, a man came testing Jesus and asking, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And the man said, All these I have over observed from my youth. And when Jesus heard it, he said to him, One thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have a treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when the man heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus, seeing, the, uh, seeing him sad, said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who, those who heard it said, then who can be saved? And Jesus said, What is impossible with God, with men, is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. So, the other lesson that we learn from this gospel reading is that keeping the commandments is very important. And somebody tested Jesus, which, what do I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus told him the commandments, but he wasn't satisfied with that. He said, oh, I, I, I do that. I have done that since I was a kid. Then Jesus told him, then go to the next level, sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me. So his calling was specifically to sell everything, and follow Jesus. This may not be true of every one of us. Every calling that we have is according to the grace we have received from God. As the epistle says, that every one of us has a different grace from God, different calling. And through this calling, we can use these graces that have been assigned to us by God. In this case, this rich man, his calling was to sell everything, give it to the poor, and follow Christ. And he was very sad because he was very rich. So it is important if we want to continue to be members of the body of Christ to follow the, his commandments and to follow his calling to every one of us which is which might be different and as we apply this calling as we implement this calling we use the graces that he gave us so if we're called to do A, and He gave us, God gave us gifts in order to accomplish A, but we choose to do B, for which God did not give us the, the gifts, what will happen? We will surely fail in doing B. If He wanted us to do B, He would have given us the graces to do B.
If you have any questions, please type them up while I remind you of a few announcements that I've made in the past. Um, so if you have any questions, please type them up. Um, the Blessed Land Inheritance Project ends on December 4th, this coming Friday. If your church has not participated in that project, you have a week, please participate. It is very important that every church participates in that, um, in that project and every church is represented. Bless Thy Inheritance is a video that we are working on. We have a committee that, that is working on headed by Shema Sishal um, to document Domsi, to document the Diocese of Miami in the Southeast in a video. Um, so if you haven't participated, if your church has not participated, please send pictures or videos to um, uh, according to the uh, article that is on domsi.org domsi.org d-o-m-s-e dot org there is more details on where you send this video to um, the videos or pictures to um, there is an email there there is more information on domsi.org the next event we will have is the winter retreat uh, January 29th through January 31st the save the date flyer has been sent to all of you at least once actually it has been sent twice um, so please block your calendar uh, January 29th through January 31st there will be four tracks one for the clergy one for the teens one um, for uh, the young adults and the women and one for the kids, the kids club. So four tracks for all of these four groups. A special one for the teens and a special one for the clergy. So it is on January 29th through January 31st. And then winter camp with a twist. It's not gonna be a regular winter camp. It's gonna be a special winter camp uh, since it is uh, virtual we would like all ages starting with 9 to 17 to participate in this uh, winter camp we will start advertising it tomorrow uh, on how to register it is February 12th through the 14th February 12th through the 14th uh, we're including ages 9 through uh, 11 um, because it is on Zoom and there is no training that needs to be taken place, no um, getting used to the new place and so on. Um, normally it is 12 and to 17 is the winter camp, but this year, uh, because it's a special year, we're starting from 9 until um, 17. Okay, let's check the questions. It says, this is the law of one. Uh, Alex is saying this. It is also based on vertical and horizontal alignment. Exactly. This is what we talked about last week. The vertical and uh, horizontal relationships with people and with God. Um, let's see. That is true, Alex. It is foundational for all Christian education, absolutely. And um, education, um, even in colleges and universities. Yeah, some of those uh, uh, colleges and, and uh, universities are misaligned because they don't follow um, this relational model. Um, Dom is saying, does B represent our own will? Exactly. 
if God wants us to do A and we do B uh, because it is our own will and we follow it. What happened to Peter when Jesus said to the disciples, don't leave Jerusalem until you are endowed with a power from above. He's talking about the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Peter ignored that. He left Jerusalem and he went out to the Gentiles. He's doing task B. The task that he wanted. And he did not evangelize a single Gentiles to Christianity. He failed utterly because it is um, task B, which is not what Jesus asked him to do. Um, foundation, uh, Theodore, foundation of the educational system, uh, we're talking about Christianity and also if it is universities that talk against Christ, then it violates that um, vertical relationship with God. That's what's meant. You see, life needs to be in Christ. How do we know this? There is no other way? Well, Jesus told us, I am the way. He didn't say, I am a way. He said, I am the way. If you want to go to the Father, you have to go through me, he said. To me, meaning him, meaning Jesus Christ. So he is the way. If there was other ways, he would have said, I am a way. But he did not say that. He said, I am the way, the truth. That's what we're talking about. Any other question? This is something that I am not inventing. This is coming from the Bible. He said, I am the way. This is not an invention or innovation or anything like that. I did not come up with that. Jesus said it himself. He said, I am the way. Any other questions? If you have any other questions, please type them up. Again, bless the inheritance project on Domsey.org. The deadline is December 4th. Um, the winter retreat, January 29th through January 31st. Uh, please check the flyers that have been sent already to you. Block your calendar so you can participate. Winter camp will be on February 12th through 14th ages 9 through 17. It's a special uh, winter camp. It is winter camp with a twist because we're allowing um, ages 9 through um, 11, which is unusual. We don't do that every year. All right, there are no more questions. Thank you very much. God bless you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Have a great week and a glorious week and a blessed week. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.